Once you have Android Studio installed, what we want to do next is verify that it's ready to begin work and our computer is able to run a sample program. Uh, so what we can do under more actions, a few different things, we can go to our virtual device manager as well as we can also import an Android code sample as a good starting point. The first thing with the virtual device manager, if we go there, what we want to see is that we have a device that we can run a program from and to emulate. Okay, essentially it's going to be our emulator. I have one here already um, called Pixel 5 um, with API 34 working with. What I'm going to do if I wanted to create a new one, what we do is click this plus symbol. We pick the type of device we're looking for. Okay, let's say I want something newer than that. Let's say I want the Pixel 8 Pro. Click Next. Pick whatever image version you want. All right, if you know the particular one that you're looking for, I'm just going to go with API 35. Click Next. And we're going to give it a name. If we don't like the name that's currently there, we want to tell it how we want to start up in Portrait or Landscape. I'm going to leave it as Portrait and click Finish. Right. And then we'll have an ex another device available to us when we want to run our program. The devices are going to be important based upon what different types you're going to test in. Right? Um, so sometimes we'll see different devices behave differently. Uh, so it's good to have a variation of them to test with. That one I currently had running, so you can see that was red um, to stop it. And the other one had the arrow that started up and all. Okay? So I just actually stopped it and I could also restart them if I need to. I don't need to do that now. I'm just going to close this out. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead to more actions again and we're going to import an Android code sample. When this comes up we're going to look at the tracker Android app. Right, this one right here. And we're going to close next. Here we're going to pick a location. All right, I've done this before so mine's giving it a name of tracker app 1. Um, I don't like to keep things on my C drive like I've mentioned in the past, but so I just want to do it to my um, D drive. So I'm going to go D, and I already have one there called F1. I can probably get rid of that name, and it should look something like that. All right, we can zoom in a little bit just so you can see it. And so there I changed the path and all to something a little bit more relevant for my computer. In the Android Studio Projects folder. All right, click Finish. Then this will load up. It'll pull the code down, okay, and load up on your machine. You're going to see, likely if you're in Windows, you have Microsoft Defender working down in the bottom. It needs to put some rules in um, to allow Android Studio to bypass the firewall. I choose automatically. It will add the rules in for that location. Um, you'll get an access user account control pop-up to choose yes on. And it's also telling you that it was done successfully here at the bottom. Um, another little message down below, it says project upgrade recommend date recommended. We do not want to do that with this application. Okay, Don't do this update. Um, it's going to um, indicate that Gradle plugin version has an upgrade available and such. We don't want to do that. Just click X, close that out. We don't want to do any upgrades or updates. The next thing we're going to want to do um, to run this program, um, you'll see and some of you may be seeing issues with Gradle at the top, unable to sync. Right? Mine's not currently showing that message. I had fixed mine previously. Um, but what we need to do with the tracker app and the versions um, of the system and Gradle and uh, Java and all we need to go to settings and under settings we want to go to settings again and under this area um, we're looking under build execution deployment and I'll scan in a little bit again so you guys can see this better and we're looking under build execution deployment and build tools for Gradle okay this Gradle JDK version is going to need to be changed for us. All right, for this 
tracker app. Um, I have the Java Runtime 17 on my computer. Uh, it's not going to run. The tracker app will not run with this. Um, it will be problematic. So here, the one that's recommended is Coretto 11, okay, um, is to add that one, is the one that you're going to want. If you don't have it on your machine already, you can click on download JDK and you'll see that there's versions here all right and then that there's options so Amazon Coretto and then the different versions go back to the version appropriately um, and choose it and you click download it'll add it to your list I already have it so I'm going to choose Coretto 11 hit apply and then hit OK and then another little trick I learned with this app before you do anything further um, is to also go ahead and close Android Studio. You can close it with the X. You can go up to um, File and go to Exit. Now, when you reopen it, it will reopen your last project, so keep that in mind. So in the future, you may not want this project to open. You're going to want to close the project first. But I'm just going to exit it. It's going to go away, and then Android Studio. Open it back up. And once it comes up, we'll uh, show you how to start this tracker app and what to expect. All right, so it's back up. And now the thing to do to start it up here, you see a little Android icon at the top. You can actually let me zoom back so you can see it. Once it starts back up at the top, the little Android under run and debug here, we're going to choose the app and we're going to want to start it. All right, we're going to run the app. It mine's up, I just open it again, it's recommending an update, but not needed to do that. So it's going to do the Gradle build, um, and at the very bottom you'll see that. And being your first time in all running it, it's going to take some time to do the Gradle build, and, and build and running, um, and get it ready. Uh, your environment, your pixel environment that you're running it on, will not come up. Um, with the tracker icon yet. Mine has been run before and deployed before, uh, so it's got the icon there already. This is the icon that's there in the bottom right next to my Chrome browser for tracker. Um, so it's going to look like that once it's ready. Uh, I could pick my Pixel 8 Pro if I wanted to as well. And you'll see that that emulator is going to connect to it now. Um, and I did cause an error to occur because I actually stopped the other device that was running. Um, you did see at the bottom right there it um, told me that the build had finished. Um, but at the same time, my emulator that it was already communicating with had been stopped, um, and therefore it's caused this error running app device offline error. Okay, so just be aware of that um, and what that error means. Uh, but we're letting this other emulator start up real quick, and we'll see what happens. Once that emulator is fully started, we're going to run this one more time. And you can see up here, um, you know, there's icons to control the emulator and all. Um, so I wanted to do that just so you guys can see that here, the first time when you're running this program and your emulator and all, you won't see that tracker icon available to you. Uh, so what we can do is we can run this one more time at the top, run the app. And what hopefully will happen is we'll deploy, and it will deploy onto this emulator version for us. And as you see, there you go. Okay. And now this is the tracker app. So now you, that's what I wanted to show you. You can switch between your different emulator devices and all. But make sure your emulator started up um, when you go to run the app. Otherwise, it won't. Um, it won't have nothing to communicate with. 
the first time you run it, and if it's your only emulator, it will start. It will start that um, emulator for you. So if you click the run button, mine had already been running from previously when I opened up um, with Pixel, the first Pixel Five that I had there. Um, but now it's there. Um, essentially, now we can play around with it, try out this tracker app, and we have verified now that our environment uh, for Android development is working correctly. Uh, we can run, build an application with Gradle um, and uh, run the Java Kotlin code so our JDK is working correctly and our emulator is working correctly and now we can go get into the next steps which is going to actually learn how to build applications with Android. I hope this video was helpful for everybody. Um, please put comments below if you run into any problems. I'd be happy to help you. If you're not currently a subscriber, uh, please subscribe and uh, connect with me. Thanks all.